Hey everybody, it's uh, Mark, Dr. Deadwax, and it's time for another episode of Out of the Inbox. This is Out of the Inbox 2. Uh, this is a BCLT edition. Uh, today I'm going to show five records that I've received as BCLT from different people. Uh, records that I've cleaned, listened to, and now I'm going to talk about them. Um, I've showed them all in like either thank you videos or uh, after the digs. First is from uh, Jeff Glong, Double O Cabbage. This was a trade. I don't think trades are BCLT technically, so but I'm still going to show it anyway. Um, this is a Bandolier um, Budgie, and uh, this is a great record. This is a you know this is kind of a hard rock, Black Sabbath kind of sound, uh, 1975. This is a Canadian white label pressing. Um, it has uh, it has uh, MR in a circle in the dead wax, which stands for Monarch Records, which is a pressing plant and uh, mastering facility out in California. So the plates were cut at uh, Monarch Records, and then inscribed by hand in the record is Canada. And then so this plate was sent to Canada, and then this record was manufactured in Canada. And that was kind of standard procedure. Um, oftentimes the first plate were cut for the world in the same place, and then they were sent out so the records could be pressed for the release. And then subsequently, uh, like a safety master would be sent, or copies of safety masters would be sent to the different uh, branch offices of record labels for them to cut domestic plates for subsequent uh, pressings of the record. So, so this is a, a first Canadian pressing on a U.S. cut plate, uh, white label promo, and this is this is just great. 1975, you know, kind of hard rock, Black Sabbathy, deep purpley kind of stuff, and I really like it. And it's not really what I like, like, but I really seem to. I like Budgie. It's like early Black Sabbath. I like early Black Sabbath, and then uh, you know I, I could care less about anything after a certain point. So, next is a record that uh, Sean Music Miner sent me. This is uh, uh, Murphy's Law Urban Renewal, and uh, I don't know why the place he bought it from decided to write on the record, but he wound up writing on the cover. But uh, and it's got this amazing price tag from my favorite record store from when I was a kid. Um, well, it's just going to refuse to focus. Eh? Uh, it's from Peter Dunn's Vinyl Museum. And uh, that's where I became a digger. At like 13 years old, I'd go in there and six hours later I'd leave. Uh, and they had lots of crappy records, but they must have had, I don't know, 100,000 records. They had like at least two floors. You go downtown, you come, you travel an hour and a half from the suburbs of Toronto, you go down to Main Street, the Young Street downtown, you go to Sam's, you buy a new record that was like far too much money, and you'd walk by a and A's and you'd go to uh, Vinyl Museum, Peter Dunn's Vinyl Museum, and you just go in there and all the records were used and they were like a buck, two bucks, three bucks. They were also sealed, he had like deletes. This, this was sealed when I got it, I opened it in the video where Sean gave it to me. Or I never would have opened it. Um, and uh, I love uh, Vinyl Museum. I know, I think Spud Boy worked for him for a while. So this is on uh, the ABC Dunhill label. And it has uh, MRC uh, inscribed in the dead wax, and that's for the uh, master cutting room in New York City. So Sean showed this in a trade video, and I said that I would be interested in it, and he said, uh, I'll, I'll just send it to you. And he did, and uh, the reason why I was interested in it was, it did, I don't know, it just looked like something like if I was digging, I would I would stop at this. Look at these guys in the back, eh? Gotta love these 70s. Image meant shit. Nobody gave a shit about their image. I mean, look at these guys in these shorts. Some executive's head would explode if you tried to put that in the back of a record these days. Um, and on YouTube, there's a, there's a track for Doz, D-O-Z-E, Jazz Guys. Look that up. Fucking 
smoking killer fusion tune. Um, kind of thing like John Coltrane 68. Chris would love it. Like that kind of, it just, lots of people would love that song. And I listened to that song and I was like, fuck, this sounds amazing. And on the front, it's got like Hard Hats by Day, Celtic Rockers by Night. And uh, it's not a Celtic rock record either. Although it does start with 45 seconds of bagpipes. This is the strangest, one of the strangest records I own. It has like bagpipes, folk rock, hard rock, um, jazz fusion. Um, there's a song on here called Urban Renewal, which is almost like a prog rock medley suite comprised of America, Somewhere, Prologue, and Cool from West Side Story. And I think it's Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. It's like a 10 minute medley of that. Not done in a jazz fusion style, but like in a prog style. And it's fucking unbelievably, you're just listening to it and it just, it's constant left turns. It's really weird. It's a really um, schizophrenic listen. But it's got some moments on it that are just amazing. The best of which is Doe's Jazz Guys, which is why I was interested in the record in the first place, which is on YouTube, and you should check it out. Thank you very much, Sean. Um, definitely going to be revis revisiting it. So Murphy, uh, Murphy's Law. The Murphy refers to J.F. Murphy, who had a solo career and is a guitar player and was also... Uh, J.F. Murphy and Salt, and a couple other variations of the Murphy and Salt thing. So, uh, killer guitar player, Shredder, great guy, like great guitar player, good vocalist, lots of talent. He seemed to put out like seven records with a slightly different variation on Murphy up for uh, the early part of the 70s. Next is uh, a record that Kevy Metal sent me. And it's uh, Brian Auger's Search Party. This is a 1981 release. It says uh, Digital Master. Um, audio file pressing. And he sent it to me. It says, uh, I think you'll appreciate this more than I do. It's just, it just isn't my bag, Kevin. And uh, it's my bag. It's great. Uh, this is uh, Head First is the label. And... Uh, it looks like a small, like, independent pressing. It has a uh, precision lacquer in the dead wax. And uh, I, I'm not sure who cut the plate for precision lacquer. My guess is it's Stephen Marcuson. Um, but this has a weird signature in it. It has an M that's canceled. Like, it's an M, a handwritten M that's got a line through it. And that isn't the way Stephen Marcuson typically signed his name. But they, they often change their name, the way they signed their names. So... I mean, the M leads me to Markson, but I, I'm not sure. But it does have uh, precision lacquer written in it. And this is a this is a jazzy, fusiony, keyboard-driven kind of sound. Uh, 1980, 81 was when it was recorded, so it does get has moments of smooth, but not like unlistenable smooth, like. Um, because fusion kind of led to smooth, so it's still the fusion. It's smoother fusion, if, if, if you can follow what I mean. But uh, fucking, this is, I'm glad it's not your bag, Kev, because it's, it's, it's smoking. Next is a record sent to me by Earl Swap, Jimmy. And uh, don't we all love Jimmy? And doesn't Jimmy need to make more videos? Uh, Jimmy makes the blockbuster video, but Jimmy needs to make record videos. Just sit down in front of camera tomorrow Jimmy and talk about some records because we love what you got to say about them and you show such great shit and uh, you have such an enthusiastic passion for them so um, come back Jimmy make videos um he sent me this this is uh in Dreama. this is Nick Falker this is Derek's friend uh Icky Blossoms he's Derek talks has talked about him a lot the kid makes movies the kid makes music the kid's like hyper talented and this is a fucking killer record and uh, Derek's on here on a couple tracks, uh, and uh, one of my favorite tracks on here is uh, Lou Popper, and I think Derek 
might do like a voc a weird vocal thing on that. I'm not quite sure. Um, and uh, there's a couple things on here I'm not overly fond of. Um, there's it's also press uh, released by Derek. See, it's uh, DVHLP-2 Derek Von Higgins recordings, DVH recordings, and then Team Love, which I think is who Nick assigned to. I think Team Love released the CD, and Derek with Team Love released the vinyl, if I remember the story. Um, so, I mean, what can I say about the, the record? Um, I mean, it's a modern record, so it's digitally recorded, and it's a little compressed, and, um, well, you know, if I held up 100 records made this year, I'd say that about 97 of them. But this one is not... It's actually highly listenable, um, so it, it stands out above most, would be my opinion. Uh, the vinyl is dead quiet, quality pressing, on center, not warped, you know, shit, I mean, fucking RTI in Germany can't get that shit right half the time, so um, it's 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 well done. It's, it's a well-made private independent pressed record and uh and the music's fantastic it's got it it just to me it has this incredible um it takes me back to what i was listening to in like 1982 to 1985 um now nick's like probably 20 years younger than me but uh it's still it has that feel it's kind of eno at moments ambient synth poppy a little quirk rocky, uh, uh, some pop tunes, and, you know, it's a really good record. I will definitely be listening to this many times. I really enjoyed uh, I listened to it once, and I really enjoyed it. And all I could think of was like, yeah, I will be listening to this again, which, you know, unlike a lot of modern pressed records, records that is not something I tend to say. So... Put it this way, this sounds a fuck of a lot better than Clockwork Orange or Clockwork Angels by Rush. So here's a couple guys in Omaha doing it right where Rush can't do it right. Who the fuck would have thought? Um, and so good job, Derek. Uh, the next one is. Uh, Oh, and I can see why you, you, I mean, that kid's dripping talent, isn't he? Uh, and the next and last one is, uh, this is from Alan. He's a subscriber. He doesn't make videos, but uh, him and I are actually friends now from like, we shoot emails back to, back and forth all the time for like, like probably a year and a half. And uh, I think I consider him a really good friend. So uh, he sent me this. This is a record I've been looking for for a long time. Uh, po post death of vinyl, vinyl, 1991. Bruce Coburn, nothing but a burning light, um, and this is a great record. It, if you're not a Bruce Coburn fan, this is not essential. Like, let's just get that out of the way. Uh, but I'm a completionist with Bruce Coburn, so. Uh, and this is a Dutch pressing because this is the only country this record was pressed in. The Dutch pressed a lot of Canadian bands when Canada wasn't pressing them, like Tragically Hip and stuff like that. So. Uh, I think you can get a Greek pressing of this too, but that's a that's a fake. Um, almost everything Greek is fake. Uh, you know, lyric in her sleeve, 1991. So it has that kind of nine late 80s, early 90s sound to it. But Coburn's gotten through the. Uh, rocket launcher, World of Wonders phase of his sound, and he, he's moving back slowly to where he came from. And uh, this is this is a great record. Nothing in the Dead Wax, and it's produced by uh, oh shit, I forgot the guy's name. It's produced by. Uh, It's not Jeff Lynn. 
Tebow and Burnett. It's produced by Tebow and Burnett, so it's 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 well engineered. Like I said, the first five Bruce Coburn rec records are, in my opinion, essential. They're beautiful folk rock records that are gloriously produced and engineered and just audiophile wet dreams. But uh, I'm thrilled to have this record. Uh, like with Van Morrison, I am just desperately trying to um, get the post-90 Death of Vinyl records from the, uh, Coburn and... Uh, and uh, Van Morrison, and they're impossible to get, and they get stupid expensive. So it was awesome that Alan sent this to me as a gift. Thank you very much, Alan. So again, just to wrap up, uh, Bruce Coburn, Nothing But a Burning Light, um, which is a great record. Uh, In Dreama, from In Dreama, fantastic record. Uh, Brian Auger, Search Party, just a great record. Murphy's Law Urban Renewal. Probably the most schizophrenic record in my collection, but still a really interesting, quirky listen that I will be visiting again to see what I can... what else it's gonna... I mean, music... they're all great players, so... And last but not least, uh, Budgie Bandol Bandolier, which is a great... Uh, hard rock record uh, from Jeff. Thank you very much. So, Thanks everybody for the BCLT. I really appreciate it. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm drinking Warlock from Southern Tier. This is uh, their, this year's, it's a pumpkin stout from this year. And it's really good. It's fantastic. So that's it everybody. Have a great day. Keep the record spinning.